Hello YouTube. Um, a few years ago I was talking with a buddy and I said wouldn't it be cool if we could find a way to automate the Etch-a-Sketch. And uh, you know after that I did some search on the internet and found that guess what? I wasn't the first guy to think of this idea. Uh, many people out there have already automated the Etch-a-Sketch but one thing I did notice was that uh, their designs were pretty cumbersome. They used very expensive parts and their images uh, weren't all that great. So I thought I would try to take it a step further, make a design that was simple, uh, inexpensive, and that could actually make a cool image. So here's what I came up with. Basically you have two NEMA 17 motors that uh, couple directly to the Etch-a-Sketch. I pop off the uh, knobs from the Etch-a-Sketch and use these flexible couplings. Uh, I've got two Easy Driver uh, stepper motor controllers and an Arduino Nano. Many of the Etch a Sketch machines I looked at online uh, used gears or pulleys and uh, often had big 3D printed frames to hold them. I tried to keep it simple with this. I really wanted uh, the cost to stay low. Uh, so if you look at these components, you're talking about 10 bucks each for a stepper motor, a uh, buck or two each for the easy driver controllers, and probably three bucks for the Arduino. I'll leave a link for the parts in the description below. The only part I really had to custom build was this plate, and to be honest, the original version I just made out of wood. So I wanted to make it a little fancier, and I... Uh, you got this piece of stainless steel. I grew up playing with etch sketches and to be quite honest, I never really got any good at it. Um, and if you look at some of the videos online, you'll see that many of the mechanical etch sketches you know, draw some simple shapes or something like that. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more. I wanted to take a JPEG picture and put it on the screen. The software behind this challenge turned out to be the real problem. Basically, I had to take a JPEG image and convert it to a continuous line drawing. Uh, think of a dot-to-dot -dot that has between, say, 20 and 40,000 dots. I did this using a program uh, named LabVIEW. After quite a bit of trial and error, I finally got something that looked pretty decent. Uh, let me uh, show you around my software and show you how I did it. Let me back up just a little bit before I get into the software. First thing I need to do is to find an image to display on my Etch-a-Sketch. I found that uh, black and white works better. Obviously the Etch-a-Sketch doesn't have color so it makes sense to use black and white. But there's uh, definitely some photoshopping that needs to be done first. Uh, first step is to crop the image to the right size and then I trim the background and then to add a little contrast and detail in the final Etch-a-Sketch image, I have to draw lines on my face with paint. I broke the software into two pieces. The first program uh, takes the image and converts it to a continuous line drawing. Like I said, I used a program called LabVIEW to do this. LabVIEW is a graphical programming environment where you don't type text. You use their icons that are built in. Uh, this here in the front is what they call the front panel. This is the part that the user sees while they operate the software. And if we go behind here, you can see my source code where I've kind of architected the program. So let's go back to the front panel here really quick. And I'm going to run this application. And next I'm going to pick my image that I want to use. And I need to go back. Okay, I've picked my file, the one that I showed you last, the Photoshop one. And uh, the first thing I do is click on this Draw Dots button. And as you can see, this first take is a little light, so I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And still pretty light. I'm going to crank this all the way dark. 
All right, once that's in place, I can click on this draw lines and it should start drawing what the etch a sketch will be doing. And in the essence of time, I'm going to pause this video and come back to it when it's done. Okay, so here's the preview of the image as it will appear on the Etch-a-Sketch. And you might know that it looks a little rough up close. Uh, generally, if you stand back about 10 feet from the computer screen or from the Etch-a-Sketch, it looks the best. Now this image, if you look over here, uh, about 22,000 dots, which is actually a pretty low resolution image. So I'm not expecting this to be my best one. Uh, but I think it will do for this demonstration. Just for fun, I made the second program look a little bit like an Etch-a-Sketch. Let me take you to the source code for a second. And uh, as you can see, all my subroutines, I used a little Etch-a-Sketch icon as well. So next thing to do is to run this program. And uh, first thing, I will have to pick my text file that I just created using the other code. With my file selected, I'm ready to run my code. I'm going to click on the Start button, and uh, if you can hear, the motor started to go. Now I added this feature here because the first line is not one that I want to keep. So after I erase this, I will click the OK button. So I gave the Etch-a-Sketch a good shake and it's ready to start drawing again. Now if you look at these controls here, I added a speed control so I could uh, kind of get a feel, make sure the Etch-a-Sketch was performing correctly before I speed it up. And then uh, these backlash controls, because there's so much slop in the knobs of the Etch-a-Sketch, I uh, decided to add these backlash so I could kind of adjust and compensate for slop in the knobs. So let me crank this thing back up and we'll go over to the etch -a sketch and see what's going on. Okay, you can kind of see here the uh, etch -a sketch is starting to draw. Um, you can see the lights on, power supply, USB cable connected to the computer. And uh, once again, in order to save some time, I'll switch to time-lapse mode and let you see what happens. While I'm waiting for the Etch-a-Sketch to finish, uh, I thought I might show you my uh, Arduino code that's on the Nano, that's on the Etch-a-Sketch machine. Uh, very simple code, and uh, if you haven't used Easy Drivers before, uh, I'm going to make a video about them next. And uh, these pins will make more sense how you connect the Arduino to the stepper driver controllers to get the response that you want. Um, so it's all digital outputs. So I set all my pins to output, uh, set them low to start with, open a serial connection with my LabVIEW program, and then I look for signals from the LabVIEW. So for example, if I send a serial uh, message of, with the number zero, it sets the X direction to clockwise. And if I send a one to the Arduino, it sets the X direction to counterclockwise. And if I send a two, it advances the stepper motor by one increment, in my case, uh, one two hundredth of a turn. Uh, so same, same thing for my Y directions. Um, using the numbers 3, 4, and 5. And then if it receives a 6, it resets. And uh, this is just when you're first turning it on to make sure they're talking. Um, the Arduino will send the message etch to the LabVIEW code and the LabVIEW code that will know that it's time to, to get going. And I turn on the LED that's on board the Nano uh, in order to let me know that everything's working correctly.
And here is the final product. Well, that's all for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw, please give me a thumbs up and uh, be sure to subscribe. If you do, I promise I will be posting more uh, time-lapse videos of my Etch-a-Sketch machine and uh, some images. Also, uh, feel free to leave some comments. Uh, let me know what you thought. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, that's all for now. Goodbye.